Good morning, London. I would change a couple of things. <laughs> yeah. Good morning, London. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. I'm going to meet up with Owen and Fitz, the Sikistan brothers. I haven't seen Owen in five years. Um, I've never seen Fitz in person. And we're going to do a lift with some people. Uh, and a Q&A with some people and I'm excited for it. Last time I saw Owen, he was like, yeah, I'm gonna do this thing called Sika Strength. And I was like, yeah, whatever, Owen. Look at him now. Love that guy. And uh, check out what I'm wearing for, for my boys. In solidarity for you guys. Hey, hey! A lot of things I do, me personally. Yeah. I, would I, would I would change a couple of things personally. <laughs> you try and hit the bar away from me more. Yeah. It's separate torso and barbell further away. Yeah. No, more lever than that. Pull 
so limited by uh, intensity and volume. Mm -hmm. That's it, intensity, volume. Okay, so I have, you know, eight. Uh, somebody asked this in my last seminar, I was like, if I'm missing percentage work, which happens to me a lot, like, what do I do? It's like, stop doing percentage work for a second there, because yeah. if you're missing 80% a lot, like, you're, you're just not lifting anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> you're, you're just beating your head against the wall. So you have to, like, break everything down, and quality needs to be the metric. And uh, I, I always use this example as like one of my favorite examples. I wasn't really training hard and I was just kind of in a weird place in training and I wanted to snatch, but like I was a little scared because like what if I don't hit the load that I want or anything like that. And um, my training partner, I was like, okay, let's do this thing where we load 50 kilos on the bar and we can only take five kilo jumps. And the only time we're allowed to go up is if both of us agree that it was a, a good rep. And so that means if you caught the rep and you took a step forward, it doesn't matter that you made the lift. It doesn't count. Yeah. Um, if you, if you, you know what I mean, if yeah. you jump back too far. And what ended up happening was like, I hit 90% that day. You know, starting at 50 kilos, five kilos, 55, 60, I hit 90 fucking percent. And my expectation was incredibly low, but our standards were just incredibly yeah. high. Yeah. And that is like, if I could tell anyone anything, like train like that all the time. I think, Mikey, you were like doing the touch and go jerks and you're like, I don't care about the load. It's just a really difficult thing. So I focus on the difficult thing. Next thing I know, I'm hitting 85, 90%. That's a perfect example. Perfect. Yeah, and I think a lot of people, so it's like, it's commonly thought of in sport that like, that quality that there's a trade-off. When you're going to competition, obviously quality sometimes goes down, or if you're playing a match, you're gonna risk an injury, quality of something will go down because you wanna win, you wanna have an outcome. I think in weightlifting and in powerlifting a lot of the time, we make that quality trade very soon. We might be like a month into a four month training cycle, and then we're like, oh yeah, the numbers have to go up. I'm obviously gonna make the fight go jump. That drop in quality should happen two weeks out, or it might not want to happen at all for three competitions in a row and then you might let it happen, you know, like you, weightlifting is so technical that you shouldn't be making those trade-offs. Like a lot of times, even today, people make a trade-off to make a TV or make a trade-off to make the number they wanted when they walked in the gym, but I would say like in terms of your overall mindset for training, you don't want to be trading off that quality very frequently at all. Resources for training, you know, how much you're training, how much work you're doing, have you been cutting weight, have you been injured, is your technique been improving? They've been following a program, they've been getting enough sleep, they've been eating the right foods, you know, have you had emotional stress? Like you have to look at all of those things like and sometimes you might get all those rice and you just won't go anywhere. Like I, I literally one year I went from one twenty five to jerk to one twenty six in a whole year. You know, and then three months later I came jerk to four kilo. You know, so like sometimes you just have to be like fuck, I have to keep waiting thing, keep waiting thing, keep waiting thing. You know, and you can be doing everything right and it's still won't improve. I actually like to try and uh, find new ways of motivating myself. So like, even today, if I, if you told me to go to a gym by myself, I don't think I'm doing 130, 150 and getting under 160. There's no way. Well, then what's the reason behind it? Well, I've got people watching, it's a great gym, great equipment. I haven't seen these guys, I'm happy, I'm loose, I don't give a shit, you know? That is such an underrated aspect of this sport because, again, the variables are kind of hard to see, they're minute, 
especially in the movement itself. So I'm a big fan of finding new ways to motivate myself. Cross training is what you call it in Jiu Jitsu. You just go to other gyms and you, you know, roll with different guys who learn different things. And so cross training and weightlifting is an incredibly underrated thing. We actually do it in Austin quite a bit. So we have big Fridays and people from all the gyms around the area will come and we'll all train together. And it's like people get excited. We change the time when we do big Friday. We, we usually train at 11 a.m. We do big Friday at 3 p.m. It's like, a, it's like an event. I mean, that was what Abit J, that was the, the big thing. And I think people love talking about the training but the big thing was, what was, what was it called? Testing? Or no. Oh, yeah, no. The, the official yeah. word. Every week they did testing. And it was, that was when, you know, Abhijayev and the other coaches and would just sit at a table and you would lift in front. And you would compete for your spot on the team. And like, I don't think there's enough of that. And when I coach seminars too, it's like I give them all of this very robust technical knowledge and, uh, we're just getting in the nitty gritty. We're getting quality, quality reps. And I go, okay, let's build the bar and have some fun. And I'm not shitting you. I was at CrossFit Murray Field in Edinburgh. And I saw 10 misses the exact same way. And the odds of that are crazy. Um, everyone was pulling the bar high enough. They were getting low enough. They could catch, sit, maybe like a split second catch, and then right down in front. And everyone was doing this. So I stopped the music. I'm like, you need to understand that they, this technique or what you're thinking cannot do the lift for you. It's like this switch where you just have to push harder. It's such, it's so, such a small sport, like effort, no one can effort for you. I can't effort for you. I can teach you some things on how to lift, but there needs to be a switch. Dylan Cooper, who I tra I've trained with forever, he has it, and it's like the coolest thing to watch. I feel like I have it a little bit too. Um, I mean, if, if you've pushed yourself enough in this sport, like you kind of have to have it. You have to, you have to be like, oh, I've never done this before. I've never done this way. I have to push harder. There's this thing where like, I'll see a miss and then like, I know they're gonna make it next because they're just like, oh, okay. I just more effort. Yeah. Right, like when, just more effort, do it harder. You know, it's, it's those sorts of things that you need to, to do if, you, if you're plateauing. You need to work on that. And I think motivation is what's gonna get you that. The bar feels lighter when you're around good people and you're having a good time, right? So there you can give the same amount of effort, but you're working harder because it's around you. Yeah, you need to like, that flicking that switch and controlling that switch is very important, you know, because every day can't be the big Friday. We also see, you probably see it as often as like where someone comes to a seminar or they'll be going to a competition and they get overstimulated and then suddenly they're smashing the bar away from them or they're ripping the bar off the ground. And you see that all the time at these kind of events, you know, and then suddenly they're failing to get to the way where they wouldn't really have failed like that before. And just not being able to moderate that, not having the handle on that task. So like, you that need takes to, time, I think. 100%, yeah, and you need to go and seek out those experiences.